some people like watching this stuff. So here's a video. This is a tank circuit or a trap that uh, that I made, and this was just testing around. It's for the 20 meter band, if I recall correctly. And you use it to block, stop, or filter frequencies, and we'll we'll test around and play with it. I made it a while ago, but the reason I made it is I wanted to have something like a standard that I could use to measure across different devices like nano VNAs or tiny SAs and stuff like that and see how consistent the readings were from device to device. Well, this isn't very scientific, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to mount it to this PCB here um, and wire it up correctly. I also got these things, so let's take a look and see what we have here. All right, this is a lot more than I thought I ordered, but that's uh, that's okay. So what these are are just connectors for BNC, right? That you can you can mount to a PCB. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount these on here. We're gonna mount this um, this this trap or filter, whatever you want to call it. And then we're gonna mount the other one on here. And then we're gonna put some connection wires on here to set uh, set everything together. So let's go ahead and get started. PCB Way is your one-stop shop for all your PCB assembly needs. You can use their website to do any type of design or prototype work that you need for your project specifically. PCB Way has a number of service offerings, from basic specs to full-featured PCBs and even PCB assembly options. You can use this form to get a quote as to what it would cost for your project. PCB Way offers a robust assembly service. This assembly service will allow you to choose from mixed or through hole components, double or single sided PCBs, installation and rework. If you need any help on any step of the process, PCB Way's friendly and helpful staff is only a few mouse clicks away. Okay, so here's where I got the idea for this particular trap build so let's just talk about traps real quick so you put a trap in line with an element on an antenna for example you can make a 40 meter dipole and then put a trap about at the 20 meter mark and then that dipole is now usable on both of those frequencies without further adjustments now you can order this soda beam kit and in this kit it goes through all the different things that you're going to need so i just went ahead and built my own and what you can see here is for 40 meters, you need a 100 picofarad capacitor, um, and it's just one of these. It's not in series or parallel. So we had one of those in the parts box, and we went ahead and we added that. Also down here, it goes over some of the toroid winding. So if you wanted to make a 20-watt trap or 100-watt trap, you come over here, you pick your frequency, and then for us it was uh, 14 megahertz. And for a 20 watt, you would use 100 picofarad plus 16 turns or 13 turns for 100. And so we went ahead and we did that. And somewhere along the lines, I read what they came with. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Up here in the packing list. So you can see toroids. For the 100 watt, you use a T94-6, or the 20 watts, a T68-6. So that 6 designates a powdered iron core. Uh, the dash 6s are typically yellow in color, and 94 is the 0.94 inches in diameter. And that's what we got. So nowhere in the instructions did it say anything about the measurement of the toroid once it's wound. So here you can see I tested it out. You can see I have an inductance of 1.253 microhenries. And it turned out that that was about right. Now you can adjust your inductance by the number of wraps or windings on your toroid. And then you can also adjust it by the spacing. So what I needed to do is put this together, hook it up to a spectrum analyzer or a nano VNA, and mess with it until I got the frequency that I wanted. We are going to hook this up to a nano VNA just so you can see the process for that. All right, if you take a quick look at these, you have these two pins that come off the back. One goes to the center and one goes to the shield. Hopefully you can see that okay. So these are for your electrical connections, and I'm assuming these two posts are for your mechanical connection, and they should be able to go into this PCB. However, they don't. And so what I was able to do is kind of finagle this up so that I have two connections for the electrical connections here going through these through holes that we're going to solder real quick. 
And then I have these posts that sit on the outside. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do structurally here to make sure that this is the best that it can be. But uh, we're working with what we got. So this is it. Okay, with these two pieces soldered on, the next thing I did is I fit the toroid and the capacitor to the uh, to the device. So now we just got to solder these parts. You can see them poking out a little bit there. That might have been easier if I could actually see what I was doing there, but uh, we're soldered in, so I think we're I think we're good to go. All right, so now we need some connector wires. All right, to get this done, we're going to use this two fang solid core or single solid solid single core tin to copper wire, and this is just cheap hookup wire. And uh, I use it because it's cheap hookup wire. So let's go ahead and uh, get a piece of this out, and we will, and we'll run it. So what I want to do is I want to strip a little bit of this, and I believe this is the one that we use. And that worked. Let's do the same thing on this side. And it worked. So what I want to do now is I want to kind of fold that down a little bit. You can see. Well, it's not exactly a straight line now, is it? Let's go ahead and uh, let's solder those in place. All right, don't ask me why we've never used this particular device before, but uh, we just haven't. But we're using it now, so that makes up for it. Let me go ahead and turn the soldering iron on that somehow got turned off. All right, now what I think I should do is I really think I should just bridge these using solder. Um, let's see how difficult that's gonna be. And that is messy. But I think it's done. Let's break out the multimeter and test for continuity on the shield side. Now, silly me, I just said shield side, but we should not have continuity on the shield side, and we don't. What we just did was center pin, so we should have continuity there if we did everything correctly. And we do, I just didn't have it lined up right. All right, let's cut a jumper for this one. And we got it. Okay, so I'm just going to solder that uh, jumper in, and then we're going to bridge the two solder points right here. Uh, pretty simple stuff. So the connection on the other side is short enough that I'm just going to do a solder bridge all the way across. I'm not going to mess with another jumper wire. 
um, probably a little too aggravating for me. But uh, this seems like it's going to work out just fine for us. Alrighty, so we'll take a look at this in the software because it just makes it a little bit easier to see. But I wanted to show we have our Nano VNA configured from 6.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz, and uh, we have it calibrated. And what we have here is a through measurement. You can kind of see S21. Uh, you'll be able to see it better on the computer than you do on the screen. And what this is is a signal is sent out of channel zero, and it comes in channel one after traversing the device that uh, we put together. Uh, a couple things to notice. When I move this device, you can see this being adjusted here. And I'm assuming that's because we're picking up some capacitance somewhere along the lines, which is changing the resonant frequency for the trap. And I can move my marker down there. And what it's saying is, is that that is 22.95 megahertz, which is not what I expected because when I put this together the first time and built it, um, it was around 13.8 megahertz. Also, just by adjusting the coils here, you can see that this moves a little bit. And then even the positioning of where it is in terms of the device, it changes. But uh, I wanted to show you how this is set up and how you can, if you build something like this, you can look at it and test it here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it in Nano VNA Saver just because it's a little bit easier. Okay, so here we are in Nano VNA Saver, and we just have a calibration uh, set up here to go from 6.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz. And I have a marker down here in this dip uh, at the low point. Hopefully you can see that, and that is saying we're at 23.89 megahertz, um, which I believe was pretty close to where we were when we were on the device itself. One thing I'll note is, is that let me go ahead and just move this thing around the desk, and I'm going to sweep it again, and uh, you can see the results change there. So it's definitely getting some reactance from somewhere along the line. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to mount this trap. Um, you know, I had some time to kill, and I figured I'd make a video showing everybody the steps that I took. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. All right, everybody, thank you.